Hello, I'm Denise Galoni. Welcome to today's episode of Empowering You. My guests today are the founders of Posh Women, which is Power of South Hills Women, women working together. They are Jackie Von Toon, a realtor with Realty One Group Gold Standard in the Pittsburgh area, and also Jennifer Hisdorf, who's an AVP in Relationship Banking at Brentwood Bank. They're gonna give you some tips on networking, some tips on real estate and banking. So it's gonna be a great show. guests today are the founders of Posh, Power of South Hills Women. So today I have with me Jackie Von Toon. Jackie Von Toon has been a licensed real estate agent since 2005. And today she's a realtor with Realty One Group Gold Standard in the Pittsburgh area. She's passionate about helping both buyers and sellers successfully and seamlessly navigate their real estate transactions. She's a member of the National Association of Realtors, Realtor Association of Metropolitan Pittsburgh, and the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors. Jackie holds a bachelor's in business administration and marketing, and she routinely uses her business acumen to her client's advantage. And also with us is Jennifer Hisdorf. They say, do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. Jennifer lives up to that maxim. She's the type of person you want on your side, one who will transform challenges into successes. Once she gets to know you, she'll have a better understanding of exactly how she can help you achieve your goals. Upon graduation, Jennifer decided she'd take a job as a part-time teller until she figured out what to do next. 17 years later, she can't imagine being anything other than a banker and a valuable resource for her clients. Not surprisingly, Jennifer has a long list of accomplishments, including being a Junior Achievement Young Professionals Inspiring Success in Business and Finance Award winner, the Women's Business Network Woman of the Year, and winning awards for Pittsburgh Business Choice Best in Business Banking, and Pittsburgh's Business Choice Best Networking Group, which is posh. But she'll admit the feeling she gets from helping customers is her highest honor Ladies, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having us. I've known you guys for so long, so I'm so excited we finally got you on the show and were able to talk and hear all about what wonderful thing you're doing. So Jackie, let's start with you. A realtor since 2005, that is a long time. Yeah, and I'm still young. <laughs> you're still young, right, right. Are we all, right. Yeah, actually, um, when I started my career, I had started in residential real estate, and then I had worked for two different builders in Pittsburgh, and then came back, uh, you know, once I had my son, it was so much easier to have a little bit more flexibility. So, yeah, and I've been with Realty One, it's going to be five years. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Wow. I know, it's crazy. When Whenever they moved into the Pittsburgh market, I was the fifth or sixth agent who had moved over with them. So, yeah, so it's been it's been really well. And what's kept you going all these years in real estate? I mean, you, I, I'm sure you've had to see like buyer's markets, seller's markets, ups, downs, everything. I think that's what it is. It's the bipolarness of the whole industry because nothing is consistent. And even since, you know, I've been in the business a long time, every uh, client you work with, every situation is a little bit different. Plus every municipality you work in, the roles are a little bit different too for, for a seller and for a buyer. So any tips you can give someone if they're looking to buy a house? Is it a buyer's market right now or is it a seller's market? Um, it's still a seller's market, but okay. it is slowly turning. Um, interest rates have gone up. So that has you know, been a little bit concerning for some folks. But uh, we are seeing houses sitting on the market, price reductions, which we haven't seen that in a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, so I also kind of look at it as a wonky market just because of everything that's happening, like people are adjusting, but then some houses we're seeing multiple offers. So it's right. a little bit all over the place right now. Right. And speaking about interest rates, we have Jen, our banker. So Jen, what's kept you in banking since, since you started way back when? 
And I don't mean to sound, sound, that sounds like a long time way back when. <laughs> <laughs> you start until you, you want to figure out what you're going to do in your career. So what's kept you in banking? Really just working with the clients. You know, I, so now I'm on the business side. I am a business banker. And, you know, when I walk into their business and they show me how they started from the ground up, or sometimes it was the business that grandpa started many, many years ago, just to see the passion and the energy that our local business owners have. It's just amazing. Um, we have so many wonderful local businesses and to be able to be in a position to help them continue to grow or develop their strategy is just my favorite part of it all. Right, right. So what happened during COVID? Jen, it had to be crazy being a banker during COVID with all the, with everything going on. It was, I mean, I remember, you know, I, the office I was in at the time was in a busy business district. And I remember coming around the corner, I parked my car and I just stood on the corner looking at what normally would have been packed full of cars and people right. and right. not one soul around. And my staff member was coming into the office with me and she stood behind me. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, someone's got to give here because these businesses are going to close if they don't figure out this PPP loan process. Right. And it took a lot of back and forth. SBA didn't know what they wanted. Change it back and forth. And just so much tension and anxiety on everyone's side. Um, you know, the businesses that came out on top were the ones that had the relationship with their banker, someone who was fighting for them to get that loan, to get it processed, to get oh. it through faster. It made a huge difference. It really came down to the relationships. Right. And you may have a good, good point, Jen. So I know with, with bankers and with banking, a lot of us, we don't even know our bankers. We don't know anyone in the branch. You know, we do our banking, like mobile banking, drive through, everything's rush, 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 convenience. What is the importance of knowing your banker or at least someone at your branch that you can turn to? I mean, definitely through that process, I think it may even made it more evident that it's about who you bank with, not necessarily where you bank. Right. You find right. the person, you find that banker and it makes all the difference. Right. I know there's a few times I've called you for my banking needs. Me too. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's, I don't know. Let's call Jen. She'll know. Yeah. So Jackie, what about COVID for, in the real estate industry? Like oh, how did that affect? We completely uh -huh. shut down. In the state of Pennsylvania, we were one of maybe three states that were completely shut down. So I could not show houses. I could not list houses. I had people under contract. Um, I'll never forget when it happened because I had an, um, an older couple where they, I was selling their home and then they were buying their home and they were closing the same day. And I had to kick and scream and fight to get them to close because the closing company said, we can't work. And I'm like, whoa, 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 we need to do something here. I mean, it was all new and fresh for everyone, Sure. but yeah, I mean, I wasn't allowed in the closing. I had to sit outside. And then once we were back to work, the paperwork, oh my gosh, there was so much paperwork that we had to have everyone sign. We had to wear gloves and we had to wear booties and, you know, cause no one knew and yeah. you know what to expect and you know, the world that we live in and everything. So it was, it was interesting for, for quite some time. But it's even, such a stressful process anyway. Yes. I mean, and when then, you're not closing, I mean, you just, you, you, oh my, sign, you sign your life away. You signed so many papers and I can't yeah. imagine like not to have like my real estate agent with me, like saying, this is this, and that, because that's the person you trust. Again, yeah. that relationship, like, like Jen was saying, like you need that. I can't imagine that. Yeah. So I, a lot of times I would just sit in the parking lot in the car and, but I mean, it's, you know, we got through it and it is right. what it is and, you know, just kind of moving forward now with everything else. Right. So we talked about relationships. So how important, I know in both of you have different, different careers, how important is relationships and networking? Jen, I'll start with you. I mean, it's definitely one of the things that is the most important, I think. I mean, even that's how Jackie and I first connected. You know, it started out in a, you know, lender agent type of relationship. And I think through that, you just grow to become really good friends and, you know, it turns into so much more. And it's, it's just awesome to have those people that you know you can call. Hey, I need a this, I need a that. I mean, I've asked Jackie for so many things, you know, house related or, you know, sure. she's the one who us. So, you know, that's what really makes everything go around in a business circle. It's, it's, building, it's building the trust too. I mean, just going back to basics, who you know, like, and trust and going out and meeting different people. It's, you know, it's not maybe jumping to different networking groups. It's to go there, meet people, then have your one-on-ones with them and get to know them. Right. 
And we'll talk about Pasha in a moment, but what advice would you, would you give someone that's watching? Because I know you start you started Posh, you founded that. If someone's looking for a networking group, but they're not sure even how to network. I mean, a lot of people, they're in, they're in a whole different environment now. They never had a network before. So how do you get started? Like, how do you find where to go? Like, how do you get started networking? Jackie? I would honestly, with Facebook groups and Facebook events, I would start there and, you know, just see, or, I mean, I know a lot of people, they attend a chamber. A lot of people are familiar with chambers. So that's, right. I feel like that's where a lot of people look to go. But right now with, with Facebook events and groups, that's probably where I would start. Yeah. Jen, what and do you I, think? Th I think it's twofold. I think that, you know, finding a, a networking buddy, someone that kind of goes to different events with you is huge because, you know, they might know someone just to get the conversation going. I think on the other side, you know, if you're a member of a group or a chamber or whatever it might be, and you see someone new that kind of looks lost, go introduce yourself to them because you know everybody, but they don't. Right. right. And we forget people don't know each other. Yeah. Like I'll be seeing a group and I'll be talking to someone and they'll say, oh, hi. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that you two didn't know each other. We just assume that everybody knows everybody that we do. Yeah, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think we all are. We just assume it like everybody knows everybody. But it is really hard. I know when I first started networking, oh my gosh, back in, two, um, show my age now, back in, I don't know when it was, 2007. And I was looking for a full-time job and a, new, a whole new career path. And I had to start networking. LinkedIn just started. I don't think Facebook was even around yet. And I went to my first networking group. And I just, I, I read a blog about this called Don't Eat Through Our Durves. Because I just kind of went over to the table and like picked at something and wait till someone came over and talked to me. Because everybody knew everyone and you don't know what to do. So Posh, first of all, how did you come up with the name Posh? We, well, Jen and I had met at a networking event. It was a chamber event. Um, this was years and years ago. And we just decided, you know what? We need to have something that's a group that isn't exclusive because there's so many groups where, you know, I'm in real estate, she's in banking and how many people are in the industry. Right. So we wouldn't be able to attend. So that's how we came up with um you know, the concept of posh women. And then posh stands for power of South Hills women. And when did you start the group? It was January of 2017 was our mm -hmm. kickoff. Wow, 2017. Yeah. So, so almost six years, We've going on six years here soon. Almost, yeah. It was about this time six years ago that we met and we started talking about like what we thought was missing in the networking space at the time. Right. You know, something that would provide a resource, education. It wasn't competing for the same business. It was, you know, open to anyone who was able to come, right. learn from each other and just be that resource. That's what we were really shooting for. And um, it's just amazing to see when our members are working together and we see the relationships that have taken off from day one to now. So whenever you were coming up with the idea of posh, I'm, I'm sure you both belonged to other groups at the time. Were you looking at those groups thinking, I like this about this group, I don't like this, like put this together. Like how, how did you come up with this formula or just thought this is what I would want in a group? Like, how did you come up with it? Because it is a little bit different this, than other networking groups. Yeah, I, I felt like it, this is what is missing. This is what is needed. And the because there's so many groups where you're paying so much money and there's so much pressure. And it's more like Jen said, a resource, because all of us in business right. want a resource and we want to be with other professionals who, you know, can mastermind with as well. I think that's something else that's, that's really important too. you. That's a, that's a great point. And you do, you always have a speaker. I shouldn't, well, most of the time you have a speaker every, every month and yeah. you meet monthly, right? Yes. You meet monthly. And what day of the week do you meet? We are on the third Thursday at 11 o'clock yes okay and i know you moved the meeting location so where do you guys meet now the napoles and bridgeville okay and that's real convenient yeah. right off 79 oh, yeah. right there easy to get to uh -huh. free parking really good food yep <laughs> that too yeah and they've they've been great too to work with um so starting this year that's where we had moved to with some of the complications with other places and covid and and such so it's it's worked out really well and the one thing I like about Posh is you don't have to pay a, a membership fee. It's pretty much, if you can make it, you can make it. If you can't make it, 
uh, you don't have to get someone to come in your place. You just come whenever you can make it, right? Yes. And that's probably what your, what your members also say, the people that, you, that come. You know, that's a really nice nice feature because a lot of these groups, you have to find a replacement. You, again, you, said, you have to pay so much money sometimes for these groups. Yeah, and it's stressful for people. I mean, it's stre- you have enough stress in your life. You don't want to be stressing who's going to replace you for something and figure that out and, and different costs and things. So, so each each meeting you have a speaker. So, what do the speakers usually discuss? What what can someone expect if they've never been to a posh and they walk into a posh meeting? Well, they can definitely expect the uh, welcoming crew because we definitely have a lively and engaging group of ladies to attend. Um, but our topics that we look for in speakers are something that is general. It's not something specific to any one industry, any type of business, right. but something that everyone can benefit from. We've had um, speakers talk about um, growing your business. We've had financial, we've had um, how to organize your day. And we've also done things, round table type events that you know we'll have one person talk about something and everyone can share if they choose to. And if you don't, that's fine too. Um, but just making everyone really comfortable in the space that we're in to share or not. Right. And are they all business topics or is it, are, there, are there people that talk about sometimes like personal development or is it mostly business? Most of the topics have been kind of a mix. We've had some specific to business, but also a lot of personal development. And I think that's one thing that's been really um, beneficial to our members over this last year and a half or so has been the personal development, how how to get back into a normal routine, how right. to reestablish some of those connections that you right. haven't you know, been in contact with for a while. And those have been probably the most engaging meetings that we've had over the last year. Oh, I'm sure. Cause it was, it, who would expect the world to shut down? Complete. Yeah. And people haven't seen people for years. I, w- I was just saying before we started this, it's been so long since I've seen you, Jackie. I, it, it's got to be three years. I know. I, yeah. I, yeah. It had to be 2019. Like, I can't. Yeah. It, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's people that you see all the time and you, you go years without seeing people. You feel like you're out of touch. You don't know like how to get, get back in there and start seeing people again. Yeah. And we, and during COVID, we had different uh, people we would interview with, um, just yeah. Zoom calls and try to release things just to keep, you know, people's spirits up and just to still keep them educating on what was happening too. So right. yeah, it was, it was interesting times for sure. And it was so hard during COVID because we were all on Zoom overload. Yeah. <laughs> for Being sure. All day long. It was so hard to, to run meetings. So kudos to you guys for trying to do that. Yeah. So if someone wants to get more information about Posh, where would they turn? We have um, a Facebook page, so it's Posh Women, and then we're also on LinkedIn, and um, we have launched a website, which that's a work in progress, <laughs> so uh, we have that as well, but like, you know, we had said we meet the third Thursday at the Napoli's in Bridgeville at a, from 11 to 1. Okay, so they could just look up on LinkedIn or Facebook, find, because you need to register ahead of time before you come, correct? Correct, yeah. There's an Eventbrite link that is, um, we put that on as soon as we're ready for our next speaker, you know, once we, usually within a couple of days after our last meeting. Right, and is there a charge to attend the meetings? Or is it just just a food charge? It's $25, yes, Um, and that covers your lunch. There's no dues or any other attendance fees. Okay, right, okay. And the food is delicious there in Applebee's. Yes. Very much. So what's next for Posh? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> is. So we're looking into starting to build our speaker set for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to really engage the members and see what do they need? What are they looking for? And work backwards into some of our speakers and other events that we do. So we're looking to maybe make some changes, um, but I think it would be in a, a positive way to really make sure that we get a you know a, a crowd of attendance that comes every month that right. can really network and build that relationship. And I, I know I keep saying build that relationship, but that's what we're all about. Sure. And after yeah. a number of years, you have to almost not reinvent, but just change, revolve. I guess I was right. Most part of the right word. I can't think of the word I want to use now. But you need to keep reinventing yourself and changing with the times. It's a different world now. 
Right. Yeah. And in any way that we can help each other in business and you know, right, just like businesses change, we change and, you know, kind of grow from there. Okay. So what about in your career? Jackie, what's next? What's next for you? Or what are you working on? Anything special? Oh, gee. well, actually, I just got my 2023 planner. So I've been going through there and starting to think about goals for next year. And um, yeah, I mean, right now, I'm pretty happy where I am with with real estate and continue to grow and, you know, sell houses and, you know, work with my clients and get referrals. That's that's the name of the game. Right. And Jen, how about you? So the position I'm in now as a business banker, that's relatively new for me. Um, I just transitioned into that in the last couple of months here. So it's, um, you know, really growing that book of business, helping more businesses to um, just achieve whatever their goals are. Okay, great. So Jen, what advice would you give someone looking for um, either residential, just banking or business banking? What advice would you give someone that's trying to find a bank? What, What tips should they look for? Um, I would definitely tell them to make sure that they feel connected to the person that is opening their account. Make sure that that's the person that they can call and tell them, this is what I need, or this is what I'm trying to do. Because the more information that you give, the more comfortable you are, the better recommendations they can make for you. Um, You know, some people think, oh, I have to have a branch on every corner. You really don't in this day and age. You need to have someone who's going to pick up their phone and help you. If you have a, a challenge or a problem come up, you need to make sure that you're connected to that person. The electronic banking and everything else is going to take care of pretty much every other question that you might encounter, but having that personal connection and making sure that you're comfortable talking to that person, that's where it's at. Right. And Jackie, what about you? If someone's looking for a real estate agent, whether they want to sell or or they want to buy a home, what should they look look for? Because I know there's a lot of, there's a lot of realtors out there. Yeah, there's in the West High Multi List, there's 7,000 agents. However, there are some that are part-time, there's some that are full-time, so there's, there's a mix, there's a mix of personalities too of different agents, but I mean, meeting them one-on-one and maybe interviewing more than one, that might be helpful because everyone's personality doesn't fit with each other. And so, I mean, it's, and it's a big investment, whether you're selling or buying, it's, it's a lot and it can be very nerve wracking. There's a lot of moving parts and it's, it's definitely a process. So. Right. Again, referrals. Yeah. Ask people you know that are happy with, with, with their banker or with their realtor. Again, this back to the networking and back to referrals. So important. I agree. Yeah. Jackie, any final thoughts? No, just I'm here. I mean, if you ever have questions and that's, I always tell people too, you know, even though I'm a realtor, I have a long list of people I work with. So if you need an electrician or a plumber, you know, those things come up too from time to time. <laughs> You have a guy, right? For all this. Yes. <laughs> and that's how I save it in my phone. It's like Mike hyphen plumber. <laughs> right, right, right. You have a guy for everything you might need. Yep. <laughs> Jen, any final words? Well, thank you for having us. I mean, this was so nice to finally be able to do this. And know. You know, we hope to see many people come out. I mean, we have people too that don't represent a business that still come to our meetings just for the um, personal development piece. So it is open to every lady in the area and we just hope to see many people come out. Right. And when is the next meeting? It is October 20th. Okay. So people can go on Facebook. Yeah, and... speaker that day. Oh, it's a, I, I heard it's a really great speaker that day. <laughs> do what do you want to talk about the speaker? I don't want to do it. <laughs> well, we're excited to have Denise speak for us that day, October 20th. Um, I don't have your topic in front of me, but um, That's okay. it, it's always a great one. You've spoken for us in the past. Yeah, it's um, been a while. And we had a long wait list for that one. So hopefully everyone will get to uh, catch you on this one. Right. It, it is so much fun. So much fun being a posh and, and seeing the camaraderie with everyone and just seeing people I haven't seen again since be- before COVID. So I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, we're excited to have you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. This evening, oh, you're so, you're so welcome. We've been trying to plan this for a while, so I'm glad it finally happened. Well, ladies, thank you so much. I wish Posh continued success, and I wish you continued success in your careers. And um, I'll see you in a few weeks, I guess, at Posh. Yep, that yeah. sounds wonderful. Thank, thank you. you again. Thank you for watching today's episode of Empowering You. I'd like to thank my guests, the founders of Posh. Jennifer Histor and Jackie Bontoon. 
Jackie and Jennifer both gave you great information on how important it is to develop relationships and networking. They also gave you a little bit of banking advice and a little bit of real estate advice. I hope this encourages and empowers you to go out, join some networking groups and meet some new people and develop these relationships. Thank you for watching and see you next time.